Okay, so you probably just finished that video on all the different steps of aerobic cellular respiration. Glucose getting broken down, taking the electrons off of it to make ATP. Probably like, but Holly, I eat more than just carbs. I eat more than just glucose, right? I'm eating fats, I'm eating proteins, I'm eating nucleic acids, right? What about all those? What about all of the other stuff that I eat that's not carbs? Can that get turned into energy? Well, yeah, it can, right? So we have many different catabolic pathways that the different macromolecules can go into, right? They all end up eventually in the citric acid cycle, but depending on what it is, there'll be different enzymes that catalyze that reaction of getting that molecule into this process of cellular respiration. So carbohydrates, carbohydrates are broken down into sugars, which enter into glycolysis. If it's not, if it's, if it's a sugar other than glucose, it will be converted into glucose, right? So you can break apart fructose and make it into, into glucose, right? So sugars and carbohydrates usually end up being converted to glucose by enzymes, and then they start off in glycolysis. Um, fats get broken apart into their glycerol and their fatty acid tails. Um, glycerol gets converted into glyceraldehyde and enters in right here in glycolysis. Um, the fatty acids get broken down into, eventually end up in an acetyl-CoA, acetyl-coenzyme A, which starts off the citric acid cycle. Uh, proteins, depending on the amino acid, can enter in in different places. We can them pyruvate, we can convert them in citric CoA, or we can convert them in citric acid cycle. Um, but what's different about proteins is that one of the waste products of proteins is this NH3 right here. So nitrogenous waste can be especially difficult to deal with. So a, high, a diet high in proteins can produce a lot of nitrogenous waste, which can be harmful to the cells. Okay, but the point being, Yes, we can use other molecules for energy besides just glucose, right? There's just a different enzyme pathway that gets them into this process of taking the electrons off of those molecules to eventually end up in producing ATP. All right, so yes, we can eat lots of different things, eventually get some ATP out of them. And this also explains the process of cellular respiration, explains why we breathe in oxygen and breathe out CO2, right? We saw oxygen being used up in the electron transport chain, the final electron acceptor, right? And carbon dioxide is produced as we move the, that pyruvate into the mitochondria and carbon dioxide is produced during the citric acid cycle. So cells are constantly using up oxygen, converting it to water, and constantly producing carbon dioxide as they're going through cellular respiration, as they're going through aerobic cellular respiration, right? So this is why we need to breathe, right? We need to get rid of that carbon dioxide waste, we need to get it out of our cells, and we need to bring in new oxygen so that way that cellular respiration can keep going, okay? So oxygen is converted eventually to water. Carbon dioxide was, that carbon that's in carbon dioxide was food. That's the carbon that was in food that you ate, right? So that's what our lungs are for, why we have a specialized respiratory system, so that way we can inhale oxygen, transfer that oxygen to our circulatory system, that way the circulatory system, the blood cells and hemoglobin can carry that oxygen to the cells that need it, cells that are using up a lot of energy, and then carry away that waste of carbon dioxide back to our lungs and then we exhale it, right? So this is why we breathe, so that way cellular respiration can happen. But what if we don't have enough oxygen, right? What if they were in a low oxygen environment? Can we still get energy? Yep, yep, we can, just not as much, right? So we can get energy basically from a modified version of glycolysis. And there's kind of two pathways that we can get energy out of food without oxygen present. Um, we're gonna talk about ethanol and lactic acid fermentation. Okay, but it's basically glycolysis with an extra step. Okay, so if oxygen is not present, cells can switch over into what we call fermentation or anaerobic respiration. So in animal cells, you have probably experienced this before, in animal cells, when there's not enough oxygen, okay, maybe our lungs are being super efficient, our circulatory system can't get enough oxygen into our muscle cells fast enough, they're using up so much energy, burning up so much oxygen that they just, they can't get enough. Our cells can switch to what we call 
lactic acid fermentation. Basically what this is, is we don't transport pyruvate, the pyruvate they ended up glycolysis with, it, when there's no oxygen, it doesn't move into the mitochondria. Mitochondria is like, nope, we're out, no more oxygen, gotta shut down, okay, we're out of business, shop's closed. So pyruvate, when there's no oxygen, can get converted into lactate or lactic acid, okay? This process right here, at the end of glycolysis, this pyruvate molecule, when it gets converted to lactate, that process actually regenerates to NAD+. So we take the electrons from NADH, we add them back on to make lactate, and now we regenerate this molecule. Because often, this NAD+, if it's not making its way to the electron transport chain, we're gonna run out of it. We're gonna be in low supply. So we need to regenerate this NAD+, that way we can still at least make a little bit of ATP during glycolysis. Remember, glycolysis produces a net of two ATP. So it's a way in kind of emergency situations for animal cells to make a little bit of ATP if there's not enough oxygen around. There's no carbon dioxide produced as a result of this, but we get lactate, okay? If this starts to build up, if our cells are functioning under low oxygen environments for a decent amount of time, it can start to burn, okay? If you've ever felt that burning sensation during intense exercise, that burning sensation in your muscles, what you're feeling is your muscles going through lactic acid fermentation and that burning is that lactic acid building up in your muscles, okay? That's not, that's different from the soreness that you'll feel, like especially if you're just starting back into uh, lifting weights or something or just starting back into exercising, you might be sore later that day or the next day. That's something different. That's called delayed onset muscle soreness and that's caused by damage to the tissue, but it's natural, it's how you build muscle. But lactic acid fermentation is the burning sensation that you feel during exercise. So this is how animal cells produce a little bit of ATP in low oxygen environments. Um, we will see in lab um, how other organisms, yeast especially, goes through anaerobic respiration in low oxygen environments. So when there's low oxygen, yeast goes through what we call alcohol fermentation. So, same idea though, we go through glycolysis, make a couple ATP from that, but we need to regenerate that NAD plus so that way we can keep going through glycolysis, okay? But instead of turning that pyruvate into lactate, we are gonna convert that pyruvate into ethanol. Ethanol right here, you know ethanol as alcohol. It's how we make wine, it's how we make beer, it's how we make spirits. Um, ethanol, right? So we call this alcohol fermentation. So fermentation is just respiration without oxygen. This process does produce carbon dioxide though, right? So this is what's going on when bread is rising, okay? That carbon dioxide that's produced causes your bread dough to rise, right? Um, this is also why beer is bubbly. In, in wine, that gas is allowed to bubble off, and when we make beer, we keep that gas in the solution, which makes beer bubbly. Pretty cool, right? So, lack ethanol, though, can be really dangerous to these cells. Too much ethanol, too high of concentration, it can kill the cells. Okay, so this cannot go on forever. We can only reach a certain concentration of ethanol during um, alcohol fermentation. But it's a way for the cells to make a little bit of ATP when the mitochondria aren't functioning because we have low oxygen concentrations.